Thanks for joining us on Help Choose Home When Care is Needed, a podcast all about the benefits and value of receiving care in a place that you likely feel most comfortable, wherever you call home. I'm your host, Marilee Orsini, and I've been involved in health care at home since 1981. Each episode, I will be talking with a guest who will help us in our quest to educate about health care at home. So let's get started on today's episode number seven, and today's guest is Kathy Kress. Kathy's probably the leading expert in aging life and geriatric care management in America. She has authored a couple of books. One is an actual textbook that is the Handbook of Geriatric Care Management used in courses where care management is taught in the college level. And the other is one of her passions, which is working with midlife siblings and baby boomers with an aging family. And that book is Care Managers Working with the Aging Family. Kathy, from as long as I have known you, which I hate to say has probably been 40 years now, you have been actively involved in geriatric care management and and helping people um, find solutions when they have a care need. So why don't you start off by talking to me about the significance of making a choice that would allow you to stay at home? Um, Well, you know, home is, you know, it's the invisible threads that kind of sew us together. Mm-hmm. And we don't think of it that way. But, um, you know, first of all, it's it's like our movie set. <laughs> you know, all of our personal belongings are exactly where we want them to be. Uh, we do change the set a bit as we, you know, as our needs are there or we get older. But... Um, it's something that we always depend upon, and it also gives us free will, um, you know, to control our own lives. Uh, we, you know, are, we can make choices about, you know, how we decorate it, if we downsize our belongings, um, and, and it gives us choice. I mean, if you, you know, gives you the ability to, you know, go out in stores in your neighborhood and and actually make choices with, with which when you move to a higher level of care, you know, especially in, you know, a CCRC, I mean, you're really, you know, limited to when the bus is going. And, uh, and here you could just get in your car or walk. And it's the one place that we feel like that we belong. And when you move someone, um, you're really stripping a senior of a lot of things. And one is memory. Because when you move out of a home, you can't take everything. You have to downsize a lot. And that means that, um, you know, our whole history, like, you know, it's embedded in there. I mean, I know you just moved, and, you know, I used to move a lot when I was younger. Um, But, you know, as you get older, I mean, all those memories, the photos you have, the family furniture, the salt and pepper set, you know, it's, all, it all brings back memories, and that's really incredibly important to older people. And it's, you know, like I said, the freedom of choice. Like my mother-in-law um, moved and lived with me. And one of the hardest, and my dad too, <laughs> and one of the hardest things for her was that freedom of choice. And, you know, what I recall is, you know, she took my son-in-law asked him to drive her to CVS, and she was shopping for, and this sounds funny, laxatives. But, you know, she wanted to do this by herself. We all do, you know, when I'm, you know, any kind of, you know, anything that's really personal. And really those things are taken away from you when you move to a higher level of care. You can still go on the bus and do it, but it's harder to do. And, um, you know, AARP says 90%. We all know this. You know, there is no place like home. I mean, we all want to remain there. And, um, you know, how a senior can remain there successfully is really um, basically through home care. Because if you move, and lots of us do this, at a, you know, at an older age, um, you, you basically, you can have everything that you have at a higher level of care at home, where you have these north stars in your life, you know, your furniture, all of which you have, uh, you're on autopilot in your own home, and, you know, I mean, when you really think about it, you go and, you know, you, you know where the bathroom is, you know where to brush your teeth, 
You know how to navigate down the stairs. You're in a subconscious, you know, mode when you're, uh, you know, at home. Uh, and you can think of other things. And when you move someplace, you have to really, you know, think about everything. And, you know, that's really hard for an older person. And, you know, most of the time they're in total shock. Um, and, you know, and home functions in a lot of ways. One is that, you know, and you don't ever think about this, it stimulates you. So, you know, you, you know, I, you know I like to move furniture around and I like to decorate. I'm actually interacting with my home. And, um, you know, that, that's not always the case when you move to a higher level of care or in a child's home. Um, and, it, and it gives us, you know, the support I was just talking about. You know where the bathroom is. You know where the stars are. It's like the North Star for you. And, um, but, you know, moving makes older people really um, navigate through a whole new universe. I always say when I talk to clients, you know, or, or I train geriatric care managers. When people move, it's like moving to Mars. And you feel like Alice in Wonderland. Um, so all of those things are available in your home, and you can have whatever you had at a higher level of care at home with home care. Talk to me about when that decision is made. And the family, I'm assuming, for the most part, is making that decision. The adult child, probably. Um, at, what are some criteria to help that adult child make the decision to stay at home as opposed to moving their parent to a higher level of care? Um, well, you know, a, a aging professional would come in and you know talk to the family and. You know, usually they, you know, the family is thinking an older person should move because there are deficits in the home or, you know, within, you know, with the older person. And, um, and most people can remain at home and just by, you know, changing what's going on at home. So, for instance, you know, if the problem is the older person isn't steady on their steps, um, you know, moving the bedroom from the, you know, upstairs to the downstairs. Uh, if they're not steady uh, and it's a, you know, f you know, one one story home, they may trip. You know, you can cement the driveway. <laughs> you can put in a ramp, um, and you know, all these you know changes to the home are fairly easy. Um, you know, it's basically calling in, you know. Uh, contractor and, and, you know, aging is, uh, you know, it's a big field now, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there that can do it. And then if the problem is also, and it's usually the home has problems and also the, the physical home has problems and the older person has problems, um, it's, you know, making sure that, you know, they're getting to the doctor, getting, a, you know, a really good diagnosis. Um, and then, you know, a lot of times it's loneliness, you know, because as we age, we lose our friends, our family might not live near, and so the aging professional is going to help the family understand how to hook the older person up with stimulation, which I was talking about, which mm -hmm. would be, you know, uh, senior centers or, you know, uh, you know, anything that they're really interested in, again, and they can't get to. So, for instance, if uh, they like opera, you know, there's, you know, lots of ways a caregiver can take them to opera, to shows, to a movie, you know, to go out and get a hamburger. <laughs> you know, but perhaps they can't drive anymore, and so they need transportation. Um, and, you know, that's quality of life. And then there's quality of health. But an aging professional can help with the quality of life. I want to go out and get a hamburger every day. I want to go to the opera. You know, I'd like to knit again in a, in a knitting group. And quality of, of health care, which is getting them to the right doctor, getting them, uh, you know, regulated on blood pressure medication, you know, all of which can happen. There's really no downside to this. Um, talk to me about accessing the aging professional you're talking about. Um, I know there is an association the, of what used to be called geriatric care managers, and now I believe it's aging life care professionals. 
Uh-huh. And yeah. so... Uh, um, uh, the, it's now called ALCA, A-L-C-A, and Aging Life Care Association. And accessing them is as simple as going on their website. Um, geriatric Care Managers, which you have been, and you were at the forefront of it, <laughs> the Care Managed Home Care, which you really designed, um, have been around for as long as we've known each other, 40 years. <laughs> and um, they are all over the country, and you can access them just by going on their website. Um, and uh, it just says contact a geriatric care manager, and it will give you one in any area. You know, you just put your zip code in. It's as easy as that, and you will find one. Um, and lots of home care agencies employ a geriatric care manager. Um, to help navigate, or you know, certainly a social worker, um, and um, you know, they are basically navigators and problem solvers. Just the way I was just, uh, you know, discussing navigators to get you to the doctor, to the hamburger, <laughs> to the knitting group, to the lap pool, um, and then um, you know, they're they're basically increasing your quality of life, and they can, uh, you know, get the house fixed. And a lot of times it's, you know, as we age, our body starts to break down and so does our house. But it doesn't mean that it can't be uh, remedied by a lot of things. And a geriatric care manager in their uh, expertise in navigation can, can work towards that. And they're experts in families, in family dynamics. And, you know, older people, uh, when they become ill or when they become um, you know, unable to live at their home, it just totally panics the family. And families, either whether they're normal or nearly normal, go into a total crisis. We've all done it. Care managers themselves go into a crisis when it's <laughs> for their parents because they can't be objective. Nobody can. So um, it's an objective party that can come in and work with a family, uh, be able to divide the care among the family, not necessarily the home care, but... Um, you know, who will pay the bills, who will, uh, you know, uh, basically give respite to the family member that lives locally that would, you know, be doing some of the shoppings, et cetera. In other words, dividing up the care that is not done by the home care. So, there, you know, you could just call or, you know, just go on the web. Alka. You've done a lot of work with um, with siblings and boomers. Talk to me about um, how someone who's in a family with siblings that are at odds about what the future of their aging parent is. Talk to me about that. How how do you intervene with that, or are there ways to for people to make decisions that um, when you have conflict among the family about who's going to take care of mom or dad, or are they going to move, or all of those decisions that happen when a care need arises? Well, siblings are probably the most difficult clients a geriatric <laughs> care manager has if they're at odds. And, um, what did you, and, and you know, this is, you know, it usually starts when you're little. You know, I'm not going to go into the, you know, psychodynamic history of it, but um, it's usually something that's been going on for maybe 50 years as long as, you know, they've been in a family together. Um, and they have two different points of view. And the one point might be mom should move into a facility and mom doesn't want to. And the other point uh, of the other sibling may be mom needs to stay at home. Now, what this needs is negotiation. <laughs> mediation, facilitation. And a geriatric care manager is really, um, as I just said, you know, they're an expert in family dynamics. And so they understand how to mediate between the two siblings and to come to some consensus, uh, which really should be what mo if mom is clear, if the parent is clear, it should be their decision. And, um, you know, basically, if they're not clear, then, you know, it's, it's basically, you know, what is best for them because they can't make their own decisions. But a geriatric care manager is really a facilitator for uh, a family. And the warring sides are usually two siblings. Um, you know, one sibling may 
want to save money and think they may be saving money by putting mom in a nursing home. Well, that's not true. <laughs> nursing homes, they, you know, uh, Medicare does not pay for nursing homes. And um, so the other sibling may be, you know, we're going to use her money for exactly, you know, what she wants. And that's really important. That's a matter of choice that I met, that I mentioned. And so, you know, a, a, a geriatric care manager is objective. And they don't take sides. They basically negotiate. They can set up a family meeting to do this and, uh, and have everybody a part of, or they can set up a meeting with the, the, with t the two warring siblings and, and keep, it on the, keep it in the present. And that's really important because, like I said, the ideation of this is often, you know, you hit me so many times before I was five. I hated your guts. <laughs> and now, and this is all subconscious, I'm going to make your life miserable. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, keep it in the present as to, you know, what mom needs, what mom wants, what can be done with the house uh, to make it, you know, appropriate for the mother to remain at home. And so, you know, or at the best level of care. It isn't that a geriatric care manager is always going to re remain, always recommend staying at home. Uh, but really the best level of care is just what Dorothy knew <laughs> in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> it's being home. Right. There is no place like home. Click, click. <laughs> um, you had your father and your mother-in-law, right, move in with you. Why did that decision get made versus them staying in their own homes? They were the products of crises. Uh, my father lived on the East Coast and in New Jersey, where I'm from, and a hurricane, and you see a, a nor'easter, and I don't know, three concentric storms happened in the perfect storm in 1989. And he uh, basically had to move to the second floor. The house had flooded many times. And I, you know, I was determined to keep him at home. I had uh, completely renovated his house, as I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, uh, it was perfect. It just was the third time it had flooded. So I moved him out. And this was really hard for him. But he did adjust. And I'm, but I'm a geriatric care manager. I got him involved in everything. <laughs> I made sure he had the hamburger. I made sure he went to church uh, because he said, Kath, you don't realize I'm a Catholic. I had no idea he was a Catholic. But I got him in, the, you know, in Catholic church, and he was very happy. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, she left her husband <laughs> at 80 uh, for the love of her life. They had a good time together for about five years, and then uh, he had a stroke and ended up uh, going to uh, not a great hospital. And um, the family, uh, you know, was going to put him in a, in a facility, and uh, she didn't have anything to say about that. So she had nowhere to go, um, and we moved them in. But, you know, that was just, I mean, how many times do you have the perfect storm? How many times do you have your mother-in-law leaving her husband <laughs> at 80? So it was extenuating circumstances, and I'm a geriatric care manager, so I knew how to manage it. And I had a whole family to support me here, uh, including the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. Um, so, you know, that's not the story with everyone. But it sounds like a positive ending to something that, um, that wasn't so positive. But did you have home care for them in your own home after they moved there? I certainly did. <laughs> It was just amazing for me because I rarely, you know, I deal with it objectively and here it was happening to me and I, I could cry at how wonderful it was. We had a care provider for my mother-in-law because they were here for 20 years. They aged in place here and she developed Alzheimer's and I had a care provider for her for 10 years who is still with me. She, she now cleans our home, uh, but she's been with us now for 30 years. Wow. And... Um, my dad didn't have home, neither of them had home care for about 10 years, and then um, I had home care for him, and it was just a blessing. I mean, the, the care providers were so wonderful. I mean, you know, I couldn't be object, you know, I was, you know, couldn't, I was subjective. I was the daughter, so I really, I loved them. They were so wonderful. They came to both of their funerals. They, they celebrated their birthdays with them. It was just 
such a meaningful thing to me to realize that they were they were my stability because I was you know working with two of them and it wasn't you know just like a case it was my family right. and they became part of my family and they you know went the extra mile you know in getting my father my father had PTSD from being in a prison camp and he was you know very much afraid of the shower and the way the gentle way they got him in there and so it was an amazing experience uh, from someone who uh, does this. It was done to me. It was great. <laughs> wow, that's a two two really great stories and good stories about um, solutions that are unusual and then home care as an as an option at the end. Um, this, you know, there I often say care is not a one size fits all. So there's not really one solution to anything. But um, for a listener who is just finding out that their parent may have a care need. Do you have any like first steps you would do that you would recommend to a to a consumer when they're trying to make a decision about should they stay at home or move elsewhere that would help them choose home if it's appropriate? Um, well, I would say you know I mean certainly that you would say I mean the first thing to do is you know consult with a physician you know and find out exactly what the, you know, the physician sees as the diagnosis. Um, and then to have a geriatric care manager um, or, a, you know, a, an aging, you know, specialist, professional um, come and, because like I said, you're, you know, you're not objective if you're the child. I wasn't objective. You know, you're, you're subjective. You, you're reacting to things that sometimes you know, don't lead you to the right decision. Mm -hmm. So to have a professional objective, you know, geriatric specialist come in and and really look at the situation, to look at the home, to look at um, the problems that the older person is either physically or mentally having and, um, and suggest a plan. And, um, you know, because, you know, they're just like, I mean, for instance, when you think of a plumber, I often use this, you know, I mean, you, you know, you realize you don't know how to be a plumber, and if your water heater breaks down, you're in bad shape, and so you call a specialist in to fix the water, the water heater, mm -hmm. and you might pay them, you know, I mean, actually, geriatric care managers charge less than a plumber. <laughs> than <laughs> that plumbers, that's about. funny. But, um, you know, it, it, a geriatric care manager is just like any professional that comes in to solve a problem and and we don't often look at like look at it like that because you know it's not something that we're well educated in we don't prepare for our parent having these problems number one because it means death so we put it off number two it means our death <laughs> so you know we we don't do our homework for this nobody does and um, so what you have to default to is a specialist, and that would, that would be the two things. I would go to the doctor, and then I would call a geriatric care manager or a home care agency that had a social worker or a geriatric care manager that could come out and do an assessment. Very, very good advice for those people who are at the beginning phases of trying to decide what to do when a care need does present. So... Kathy, thank you so much for the conversation today. I think it's been very helpful, and I really appreciate you giving us time, and, um, and good luck to you. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for uh, you know, uh, letting me be on the program. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening today. And a special thanks to our sponsors and partners, National Association for Home Care and Hospice and Core Cubed. And you can find more on our website, helpchoosehome.com and social media. Join us, want you, and spread the word to help choose home when care is needed. Music